eat? No. Anyway. Because my sister told me, and I will quote this again. We are one drop of water. But if we come together, we'll make a wave. And if we keep coming together and we keep close to each other and we protect each other and we stand by each other's side, we'll be able to overtake any obstacle that comes within our way. We'll be able to overcome anything that comes within our way because we are water. We can cut through stone. We can cut through metal. We can cut through life itself because we are the bringers of life. Man or woman, child or adult or elder, we're all here today because we understand the importance of what it means to have clean water. We understand the importance to need to survive freely without having to pay the government who have, without having to pay anything because we know what it's like to struggle, to go without, to feel like you're nothing, to feel like you are nothing, to feel like you're gonna be nothing. But today, on this day here, we are together, we are something, and we are strong because we gather today, because we love our neighbors, we love ourselves, we love our community, and we love our city. Even though it's not what we wanted it to be, we can change that, but on this night right here, we have to stand here and remember that we are here for each other and that we are here for the world. We are here for the city and we are here for the homelessness and the people who do not have a voice. We are here for the people who cannot help themselves and we are here to remember that love and community can accomplish any type of negligence or like negativity of all kinds because you know they don't know what they do. They just get paid, you know? They get paid to do what they want, or they just don't really care. But guess what? Like, all of you guys here, Wapi Latanka, thank you. Pilamia Galofa, thank you for gathering here tonight, for coming here with us to march on this night into remembrance of the dabble pipeline that is threatening the lives of my community back in South Dakota, that's threatening the lives of my brothers and sisters who are fighting just to survive. What we let talk about? Call me a fellow. That's all I have to say. building the pipelines. Army Corps is who's in charge of arguing against Biden for having the pipelines still continue. So. That's why we're here. We're trying to get Biden to fully shut down the pipeline. And the Army Corps of Engineers here in Portland is one of two headquarters for DAPL, if you didn't already know that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I, yeah, this is being put in so that ambulances can go to and fro or okay. to and from uh, 48s Great. and stuff like that. Yeah. And get, uh, even us, this well, is a good thing for us. Activity. What I would like to, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a look and just so I can go back and explain to people who are really nervous. Of well, all, it is, all it is, is I, I understand. Like serpentine, is it? I understand. I'll I just want to take a look. That would be appreciated. Just, just you so why are those barricades on our side? And why are the paddy wagons there? And why are there Humvees coming down that road right now? what my plain question is to you. Well, it's a public highway. We have secured, if it was a public highway, then why is this now taking place? I mean, this well, is a public highway the long time ago. We should have had the obligation to go through because it. Because of the confrontations please. we've had in the past. And if this is a public but highway, drop our charges. Why can't you put it on that side? Why don't you put it up at, like where the hill's at? You know? We could obviously all see that right here that you're just pushing it more and more in. How does that look from us? All those Humvees that are coming down, all those paddy wagons? They're gonna keep coming on. These people are gonna keep coming up. You want to de-escalate situations? I would suggest all those cars and those vehicles be gone. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then, I think, then I think we will fade away doesn't... back into the camp. Hey. And we can do that right now. Okay. Okay. Can I speak to our people? We can do that right. <laughs> 
Hello, all of you beautiful and wonderful people. I see you all tonight and I honor you all for standing here with every, each other. You are all amazing. You are all some really badass warriors. I see it in your eyes. I see it. Yeah. I see it. Hey. Come on, guys, we need some more laughter. Yeah. 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 Us yeah. yeah. need a people yeah. feel through laughter. We heal together, telling jokes, making fun of each other, teasing each other. It's all awesome to see you. Let's heal together. So I have a poem that I've written. And it's about many things. And if it happens to offend you, your colonizer is showing. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on, let me get it up there. Hello everyone, my name is Isha. I already told you that. You can call me E. I go by she, her, her pronouns. I'm 17 years old. And I represent the Amina Nations Academy, Important State University, has a 2020, 2021 Miss Naimuma. So I might be royalty, but I'm a protester. I'm a protector. I'm a motherfucking warrior. <laughs> this poem is called yeah. Endless Brown. Endless Brown, and her eyes, her eyes are as deep and brown as the Lamet River. You can see the grief, pain, sadness, happiness, and sorrow spin in her eyes like the currents twisting and turning in a never-ending loop. You can see the strength of the stream of resilience as she looks at her traumas in her face. She fights the black snake, the greedy monster, the selfish pale face, with peace and education. She fights when she is forced to. If you look closely, you will see the anger in her eyes and the prayers of thousands of ancestors who stand behind her in the endless brown of her eyes. This is for the endless sea of little brown girls, for little black girls, for all little girls who are forced to grow up and be adults by the time you are 12, raising kids, cleaning house, and sacrificing everything for a way out. This is where the endless brown of my homeland, my people stand on the front lines, standing tall. Rings of age and wisdom are easily shown on the elders' faces. They stand like the trunk of a tree. Their wisdom is passed down from generation to generation, breathed out in a quiet breath. As for in their time, it wasn't okay for them to have this knowledge. Their whispers, their laughs, their memories stain my mind as I look at the crowd and don't see them anymore. Their tall trees are cut down, but their knowledge and wisdom still stays strong in that trunk of the tree. The roots of their knowledge still alive. Let the hope and the resilience keep that tree strong. I see this world through my endless brown eyes. My copper red skin only darkens in the summer. My brown hair and brown eyes look, look more intimidating than I remember sitting at the lunch table holding my school lunch as all the pretty white girls scooted over with their homemade lunches and their nice water bottles, that ain't worse it. I laugh and joke with the boys that I feel too afraid if I tease and make fun of them that the perfect white girls whose parents take them to school every day or nice, on their nice bikes or cars feelings are my hurt or saying something irrelevant or too mean about who I am. They look at me and they make an image of someone who's bigger, meaner, and afraid, and who's afraid they might hurt them. This is the image that they gave me, a little copper red skin girl whose braids were messy and wore nothing but basketball shorts and oversized t-shirts. They gave me an image of a mean Indian monster who isn't like them, perfect white, and comes from a perfectly white family. I come from a reservation from a small town of endless brown and red skinned people where we fight every single day. Endless brown, the dirt shifts under my ripped up bands, lava rocks rattling against my foot as I walk. The water is clear, the air is fresh. How long are we gonna have that? I look around, the scenery is nothing but endless brown tall pine trees that touch the sky, mountains that have shaped our way of life, and our stronghold where the Modoc people fought. I lay in the water, my dark little brown cousins play in the sand, hunting little down little frogs, shooting them with BB guns, enjoying their, their luckiness to be here in our homelands. I smile and I laugh as the adults refuse to put their toes into the freezing water. But as kids are swimming amongst the fish, some dive off the dock, some wade into the freezing water. But I lay perfectly still on the smooth waves of Medicine Lake. Oh, hiya. <laughs> First of all, this is our land. Get going, go on. Talk shit, remember who's land you're on. Hashtag land back, motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry. 
Don't sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm on my land, motherfucker. You get going. Ah. This is where I was put to protect with all these beautiful people. So fuck off. Where am I now? Hold up. In this, uh, hold on. In this brown, I sit in the middle of endless spaces next to one of the strongest women I know. She fights for equal rights. She fights for MMIW. She fights just to fight. She is stubborn. She is loving. And she's one hell of a warrior. And I look up to you, Simona. Hearing your story, we sat in the middle of a big crowd of white faces. I listened to every word from you. And I honor you tonight. I thank you tonight. You inspired me to be a strong, hard-headed, and to fight in the most graceful, graceful but badass way ever. I look up to you, and I see nothing but endless love and respect. Endless sea of young faces. I see you all. We are the ancestors to our ancestors' prayers. I see you and I honor you. We have a bright but bumpy future in front of us. We will continue this fight in a good way. Walk, talk, and learn the ways our ancestors have. We will teach, speak out, and have no fear. When they continue to oppress us, we will link arm to arm and fight amongst and fight against them. This is our way. This is our time, and this is our way of healing. I see you, young adults. And I'm excited for you. I honor you, and I want to fight with you. Not fight, fight you, but fight alongside you. Well, let's go then. I want to fight with you. Us youth have to stick together before this world crumbles in front of us. We have to stick together so that when our elders go to continue their journey, that we, we that they know that the world is safe in our hands. As we were taking care of as children, we will take care of Mother Earth. And when we fight for our mother earth, the oppressors and the faces of greed. We'll see our endless sea of faces who are painted with strength and resilience. So to all of you youth and future generations, I honor you, I love you. You are strong, you are loved, and you are important and worthy of every praise. To the endless tears of our ancestors, whose tears run like a river. I, sorry. I honor you tonight for your strength and for the resilience that you have passed down to us who all stand here fighting and protecting the water in mother earth. Tonight we pray, stand, fight, and heal together. We honor who, all, who have all sacrificed so much to be a standing rock. We stand and we fight in a good way, in a way to make you proud. To the endless sea of faces here tonight, I honor you. Let's march and fight in the best way we can in honor of the land and the water. This is our way. Walk in this world in a good way, a good and gentle way. Talk and speak kindly to others. Protect and praise one another. We all walk a difficult path. Love one another and remember to wear your damn mask and social distance for our elders and for ourselves. Have a good night, everyone. And remember, hashtag land back, hashtag black lives matter, hashtag no more stolen sisters, hashtag save our children, and hashtag abolish ice, and hashtag fuck dapple.